five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, how are you? I'm Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble and it's our first night this week. We took last night off, we'll tell you about that a little bit later, but right now we're going to check in with our old friends. Ladies and gentlemen from the other coast of the United States of America, from San Francisco, California, it's uh, Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hey, Alex. Hey, hello, Larry, a TV show that was the biggest failure in the history of television. By, by uh, McLean Stevenson. By McLean Stevenson, yeah. Yep, yep, who yep. left, who mm-hmm. left MASH to do that, <laughs> that turkey. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. He went, the he, most successful sitcom in history. He left. Yeah, yeah. I can't, That's a decision I would have made, was there probably. A, but, uh, was there a bigger... He was funny. There was, there was one bigger failure than his show. Because Hello, Larry, I think, lasted like 13 episodes before they canceled it. Yeah. You know? But I had a friend who was involved in a show called Turn On. Uh, George Slaughter. George Slaughter did it for ABC. He he had uh, laughing on NBC, and then he sold them this idea of Turn On. And uh, I think it may be the first show that was ever canceled before it made West Coast play. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they say it got canceled as, as the times were changing across. Time zones were changing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 they may have actually made it to the West Coast. But I had this friend, Chuck McCann, and Chuck uh, uh, told me the story about how he got this job on, on Turn On, being a, you know one of the uh, people who kind of like laughing, but it was you know different cast and everything. And so here you got turn on, and he said he he did the he did the first show. And he went to sleep that night. He got up the next morning. He walked into the office, and it was like tumbleweed was going through the office. <laughs> and he said, "What the fuck has happened here?" And they said, "We were canceled." He said, "After one show?" And he says, "Yep." <laughs> ABC didn't like it. Or, or it could have even been something as just pernicious as that ABC had hired a new head of programming who didn't make that decision in the first place, and so he didn't want to go along with it, you know? In any event, the next day, you know, he, he went in there and said, ah, we're going to go in and we're going to get ready for, the, for show number two, right? Nope, wrong, no show. But the worst, the worst of all time, and I think we've talked about this before, was what happened to Jack Gallagher. Um, Jack Gallagher was a, uh, um, a, a, I think, a pretty great comic. Very strong uh, comic uh, from I, Boston. I thought, uh, as a as a uh, 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 as a stand up, one of the better ones I've seen. I think you'll agree with me on that. You know, yeah, I think uh, you brought him up on Comedy Tonight, and he had uh, he had one of the best TV shots I've ever seen. I mean, yeah, he was just it was incredible. And, and yeah, you, do knew, you remember that he tore the and you know place apart. You, you knew fire was going to strike that this guy was yeah. going to do something big. So what happens? He and I, who is he? He was he, he was good friends with uh, with Goldthwait. Uh, yeah, yeah. And um, all of a sudden we hear. Jack Gallagher, this guy who, you know, we thought was terrific, but that doesn't mean that he's going to become big, gets himself a series on ABC. Again, another net, again, ABC. (laughs) The mark of death. They do the Jack Gallagher show, right? I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's a sitcom. I, maybe he was a doctor or something. I, no, he wasn't a doctor. He played a doctor on Curb Your Enthusiasm. But uh, 
Uh, I should know. I think he. I think he played a sportscaster. Something like that. Yeah, it's a family sitcom thing. Yeah. You know? But we were so happy for him because there wasn't any person on planet Earth who didn't like Jack Gallagher. He was just one of right. these guys that everybody liked. Unlike me. Okay. <laughs> and me. <laughs> uh, I find it very hard to find anybody on the face of the earth who likes me. Okay. <laughs> so when I do, I cling on to them like like. You know, <laughs> grim death. But Jack Gallagher is loved by literally everybody. And so we couldn't have been happier that he got a series. And then you got TV Guide that week. Remember TV Guide, folks? Uh -huh. You know, kids today don't even know what TV Guide was. But the guide you had on your table and you, so what's on tonight, dear? Well, let's see. At 830, we've got whatever. And on TV Guide, they had taken out two whole pages side by side so that when you opened it up, there was the Jack Gallagher show, right? That's about as big as you can get when they take out an ad like that, okay? And I think they premiered two episodes that were going to do them one night after the other. And they're, they're in TV Guide. Every TV guy in America has got a two-page ad for Jack Gallagher's show. They canceled his show before it was ever broadcast. Wow. You know, I mean, it, it, I'm telling you, you got these two pages side by side. So when you opened it up, there was a, a full TV guide of the Jack Gallagher show ad. And they canceled it, like, I think the night before it was supposed to go on. And, and the reason was, in that case, it was what I said earlier. It was some executive who didn't make the decision about Jack Gallagher, who had just been appointed the head of programming, who decided he didn't like the show. They do that. And I felt so bad for Jack Gallagher. I mean, I just felt horrible for him. Because, number one, nicest guy in the world, okay? Mm -hmm. A success where, you know, of course, I will resent anybody else's success, but I didn't resent his, okay? Uh, I, I, and I once said to Jack after the fact, I said, what kept you from slicing your wrists? Um, and he said, well couple of things number one that show business because he was just very <laughs> he was very realistic about the business he was in and I think he said to me and also I had 13 weeks worth of money they had already paid me so you know yeah. that, <laughs> at least I got something out of it but I said if that happened to me I'd want I'd go look for the closest fucking bridge you know and he said well yeah, that, that, that show business and he never he never got another shot on national television. He went to Sacramento and became a local TV personality up there. Um, and, uh, you know, he's still around. If, he was, if anybody ever watched Curb Your Enthusiasm, uh, Larry David had a doctor on several episodes throughout the right. years, and that was Jack Gallagher. Uh, Are you still in Sacramento? I'm working with him in a couple of weeks. I guess. So. I guess he's still doing stand-up, right? Yeah, yeah, and he's he's doing another. He's done a couple of uh, one man shows, and he's got a new one coming out that sounds very interesting. He was in a he was on a bicycle accident and got hit by a car. Yeah. So he goes to the ER, and uh, they send him home. And a couple of days later, his wife said, "Jack, I think you should go see the doctor. You've been acting weird." So they take him back to the hospital, and I guess he had a rather severe concussion. So the uh, the doctor's orders were he had to sit in a dark room for four days and do nothing because I guess the brain gets over agitated and you just have to relax it. So he's doing a one man show about this called Concussed. <laughs> but uh, it just, I, I can't imagine sitting in a dark room doing nothing for four days. I can't imagine sitting in a dark room with him doing a comedy one man show about being getting a concussion. <laughs> But if anybody well, could, he can pull it off. He can pull. If anybody could do it, he can pull it off. No question about it. You know. Wow. Wow. Son of a bitch. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, you know, I mean, I uh, uh, the other thing, you know, I, mean, I remember um, when you talk about shows that didn't go on, uh, another guy we, we liked, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, oh, God, my mind's going. Um, he died Did a few he? years ago. Um, Schimmel. Schimmel, Bob Schimmel. Uh, he got a series on Fox, you know, and this was another guy. We, we all like Bob Schimmel. Bob Schimmel was, to me, he was gold. He was gold because he was, he, he was a good friend as well as a, good, a really great comedian. And the reason I say a good friend is that when I was out of work in San Francisco and all of a sudden I was fired, the one guy from out of town who would call me constantly to make sure I was okay was Bob Schimmel. And the Bob Schimmel story, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the saddest stories in the history of comedy. And it starts with his son getting cancer. And him having to go out on the road, not be with his kid, so he could make enough money to pay the hospital bills to get this kid the best possible care he could get. And he, he, you know, he took this kid with him on the road, and the kid was really quite sick. Do, do you remember the story, right? Oh, yeah. And the kid was sick for years. Yeah, sick for years. Uh, eventually, the kid died at about 11. Uh, but the story of just that alone, the dramatic quality of that, would be enough to make a movie in and of itself. A father is a comedian who finds out his kid has has cancer and now go has to go out on the road to make the money to pay for the kid to dip it, from taking the kid around wherever he went so that the kid could see the world. I mean, it's it's an absolutely number one. It's a beautiful story, but it's a horrible story at the same time. Okay. That's bad enough. Okay. Then after the death of the kid, uh, the marriage doesn't last. And so he breaks up with his wife. And all of a sudden, he comes down with, I can't, what kind of cancer did he come down with the first time? I think it was, uh, I think it was lymphoma. Something like or... that. Yeah. They cure it. Okay. Then he gets something else, another kind of cancer. He wrote a book called Cancer on $5 a Day. Yeah, well, he, I remember yeah. he, at uh, one point he needed a liver. He needed a, well, that, no, that was, that was towards the end. He needed the yeah. liver. He was waiting for the liver at the end. But he had one health issue after another. I mean, it, it just didn't stop. It just didn't stop. And he kept doing his comedy, and he would come in to see me at uh, Sirius, and every time I saw him, I went, he's looking worse and worse. I mean, he was just, he was looking pale, and he was, he was just, he, he, you know, and then finally it turned out he needed a, a liver transplant. And so he was waiting for the liver transplant, and he's driving, he's riding down the street, uh, his daughter is driving the car, that he bought for her. That he bought for her. And I guess the car hit a tree or it hit another car or something. I think they hit another car and she, it rolled over and uh, she lived and he died. Yeah. Is that not the saddest career you ever heard <laughs> of in your life? I mean, really, it was one he lived. It, it was like he was Job. Okay. And God had said, okay, you're, I'm leveling everything I can at you. Let's see if you can take this. Ha, huh? can you take this one? Can you take that one? And he just kept doing it and doing it. And doing it. He, just, he was a survivor. There's no question about that. And you, I thought he would die of a bad liver or he would die of cancer. But no, he dies because his daughter, would, did we say he hit, hit another car? Was that it? It was an accident. It wasn't a tree, but I think it was another tree. car, uh, or the car rolled over. And yeah, yeah. So, uh, and uh, I knew the daughter because uh, the daughter came in and d did the show with him once, and then uh, my my uh, engineer uh, took a liking to her, and they dated for a while. You know. Oh wow! So all I could think of is how does that daughter feel? I mean, to this day. Exactly. Yeah, you know, I always wondered that. You know, so I, so these are some real amazing 
stories that we have here about life and about what's you know what's going on, what you know about that kind of thing but that is the most tragic comedy story i've ever known and a guy yeah. i really miss you know i really when he went i just was i was taken back you know first time i did a road gig in sacramento he i worked with bob Schimmel, and uh, he was very helpful to me yeah uh, and my question is why all the good guys die you know exactly the mean guys go on forever i'm, I'm uh, here you're telling me folks i should believe in the lord thy god and i i don't see any evidence that he exists otherwise robert schimmel would still be alive uh jack gallagher would have his 10th series on abc uh you know i mean the good people would be rewarded the bad people Hey, then you can smite them, okay? Yeah. Uh, but I don't see any evidence of that. Yeah, I think the, the whole karma theory is uh, as stupid as religion itself. I go back to maybe the greatest, one of the greatest comics I ever saw was Bill Hicks. No question about it. I think you'll agree with me. He was, yeah. he was immaculate, okay? He was what comedy is. Uh, he, to me, was... People always used to say, uh, Bill Hicks is the, uh, uh, the so-and-so whoever they're referring to, the, you know, Sam Kinison, the new Lenny Bruce. No, he wasn't the new Lenny Bruce. Okay, he was good, but he wasn't the new Lenny Bruce. But everybody would use this this thing about the new Lenny Bruce. If there was anybody that came close, it was Bill Hicks. He had the same outrage. He railed against society. He His act was immaculate, okay? And if you ever want to see his work, he's they've got HBO specials with him and a whole bunch of stuff is online. Go to YouTube. Just put in Bill Hicks and you'll see any number of stand-up acts with him. Uh, but he was just incredible and uh, died at 32 of pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. Remember the last time just, I ever saw him? It was in the... Just, as, just as he was starting to get huge. <laughs> it was in the uh, Punchline um, dressing room, a cl club that's closing in San Francisco. And uh, I said to him, so how are you? And he said, uh, I'm quitting comedy. I said, what? He says, yeah, I'm quitting comedy. I don't want to do it anymore. I said, why are you quitting comedy? You're, you're incredible. And he just said, ah, that's it for me. I'm through with it. You know. And we talked for a while, and I, I left. I didn't know anything was wrong, but he did. He knew they had pancreatic cancer, and the doctors gave him six months to live. And um, you don't hear usually people dying at 32 of pancreatic cancer, but he drank and he smoked, you know. And um, uh, he went. Uh, and uh, I remember um, he had he had done in the first couple of weeks that uh, uh, Letterman was on. He did the Letterman show, and when he left, he said to himself. They, you know, they all patted him on the back, said, great set, whatever. He went back to the hotel, said, you know, I finally was able to do my act and give people an idea of who I am on television. I've never been able to do that before. And then he gets a call from the producer of the show who says to him, I'm sorry, but uh, we're not going to run the set. Dave is worried about it. And they didn't run the set. And uh, uh, there was, uh, you know, he, the next day I talked to him on the air about it. And he told this, this story, you know, about how he went back to the hotel and thought it was terrific. And Letterman, in later years, felt so guilty about this, especially after Bill died, that he had Bill's mother on the show and then ran the set that never they ran. They ran the set, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the day that uh, Hicks died... I called over to Shecky over at the Letterman show, and I said, did you hear about Bill Hicks? And he said, what did he do now? <laughs> you know. And, <laughs> and, and I said to him, he died. He went, what? I said, yeah, he died, pancreatic cancer. And, and he, it, 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 Shecky was absolutely stunned, and I hear Letterman was stunned, and for years felt guilty about it. Yeah. You know, felt very guilty about it. So I mean, you know, I mean, this is uh, this was a guy who uh, who was terrific, and and you know, again, I say, God, if you exist, where were you? 
Let's talk about a f- <laughs> let's talk about a few deaths because you like talking about death, right? We love death. Yes, you love death. And uh, when we're recording this, uh, this just happened yesterday. But when this is going to be played, it's about a week later. Um, uh, Doris Day, ninety-seven. You know, Shecky sent me a link or sent me a thing. Said on uh, on on your uh, Alexis. I'm saying Alexis because Alexa, uh, because I can't say the other word. Otherwise, it will say something back to me here in the office. Okay, because I have one. See, well, watch what happens. Echo, what time is it? It's one forty-nine p.m. See, see I can, <laughs> so I can't, I can't say, I can't say the word Echo. Okay. Anyway, um, um, so he said, try. try uh, playing off of Amazon, um, just ask for songs by Doris Day and Andre Previn. And I asked for it, and she was phenomenal. Wow. I mean, you think of her as being this virgin-esque, clean-cut whatever, but we forget that she was a singer with Les Brown's Band of Renown for years, and, and that's where she got her big start, and that she was a big fan of Ella Fitzgerald, and basically, she was kind of a jazz singer. And on this album, she is just, I mean, it's breathtaking. It's just breathtaking. And um, the greatest quote I've, I've read was, remember Oscar Levant? One of my favorites. Yes, Oscar Levant was a concert pianist who somehow made a career being a comedian in movies. <laughs> I don't know how that happens, but it does. And his quote, and he was always great for a quote. Somebody said this, no, this was Groucho Marx, or somebody said this. No, it wasn't. It was Oscar Levant, who said, I used to know Doris Day before she was a virgin. She was phenomenal. And I and I think because of the kind of movie she did and the kind of career she had, we kind of don't think of her as fondly as we perhaps should. But she was a superb actress. I mean, look at the man who knew too much, for instance, as an example. Yeah, I think she's remembered for those uh, lame Rock Hudson movies, but uh, she has a little more to her than that. There was a lot more to her than that. She also did one with Jimmy Cagney, L- 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 Love Me or Leave Me. Uh, which was about uh, Ruth Edding, who was a singer who fell in love with a gangster, played by Jimmy Cagney in this picture. And uh, it, it turned in a great performance. I mean, she was not a hack, okay? She had chops. And sometimes, you know, your chops are great, but chops aren't what are going to make you the big bucks. And she went with the big bucks until she married Marty Melcher, who then somehow invested her money badly, and when he suddenly dropped dead, she found out she didn't have any money. But he left her with a CBS TV series, uh, which she then did for five seasons, and that got her out of the hole. And her son was Marty Melcher, who was a record producer, who uh, came either signed or came close to signing Charlie Manson as a recording artist. Right, right. Honest connection and ever. Supposedly owned the home or or something owned the home that the Manson murders took place in, uh, Polanski's residence. That that was actually Melcher Melcher's place. So uh, the Melcher family had a a link to the uh, to the Manson family. Yeah. Um, but then again, so did everybody else in Hollywood. I mean, the Beach Boys, for instance, were again the same thing. Another th- person that died, and I just wanted your opinion, Tim Conway. Oh, loved him. Tim Conway was singularly terrific. Okay, I mean, as a sketch comic, he was. He was. He was. If you want to talk about the quintessential sketch comic, there, there he is, right there, right in your face. Tim Nothing Conway. funnier than him and Harvey Corman. Oh, yeah, and they would constantly break each other up. That was the, yeah. other, <laughs> the other part about it. So we lost two greats, and we're, I'm sitting here. I mean, this show, as I say, is going to be played this episode with Bubs because we do two in one day. 
They're going to be played a week of after after well, like Doris Day actually died yesterday, but it'd be a, a week plus yesterday. Uh, who knows? They, they go in threes. I wonder who the third is going to be. Probably us. Probably yeah. I I feel like it. You know. <laughs> And uh, Doris Day, also a great animal rights activist, which we love. Yeah, well, that was her. That was what she did for the rest of her life is she, you know, looked out for pets. And she had a show about it. And that was where Rock Hudson made his last television appearance. Um, so, it, you know, I mean, it, 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 she was, uh, she was uh, not, not to be trifled with as, as just passing her off as a hack. She was terrific. She was just terrific. Yeah. Anyway, that's about it for uh, Larry Brown. Again, that's it for now. And in case I drop dead tomorrow and don't ever see you again, nice knowing you. <laughs> well, maybe we can work out at that new Google gym in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Five years and still talking. This is Gabnet. The Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And we love talking to Larry, right, don't we? By the way, it, 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 it's, it's that time of year where you can hear in the background my uh, air conditioner, okay? Am I a little off sync? I don't know. I can't tell. I don't care. I don't give a shit anymore. I really don't. Uh, let me see here. Where are we gonna go? Uh, but, 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 but let me let me open up the lines here. It is it is hot in here tonight, and it's not that hot. But this room, for some reason, gets hot. So anyway, um, I, I I imagine I'm in sync. Uh, tell me if I'm not in sync. Uh, I should be. This is the uh, old machine or the good machine or the whatever machine. Uh, I can uh, I can. I, I, I'm trying to figure out how much off I am. Well, anyway, because I can do something about that. I can a actually change this. I, I, oh, here we go. We already have somebody calling us. Yep. Let me see here. Jeff Stein is calling. Uh, okay. Hello, Jeff. How are you this evening? Let me, let me put him, let me put his picture up here. Uh, there we go. There's Jeff. Uh, let me see here. And then we go over to Charles Wallace. Uh, but, of course, Charlie is going to have to be called back. Oh, wait a minute. We got Charlie anyway and because he already yep. has a, a place. Uh, here comes Josh Wheeler. Let's see if Josh uh, jumps in or whether I'm going to have to call him back. I think I'll have to call him back. So let me just call him back. Okay. And we get, um, let me see here, um, where, where are we, uh, 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 Josh Wheeler, there we go, okay, he's in the third spot, but he's not coming in, uh, are you there, uh, Josh, oh, there he is, okay, all right, all right, so I can now transition everybody over to this, okay. Now, if I go over to this, somebody else is calling. Is somebody else calling? I guess not. I guess I don't have to worry about that yet. Okay. Do you, uh, do you have me? Yeah, I have you. We got okay. you. Yeah, you're good. You're terrific. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Uh, is there anybody else who was trying to call? It's strange because I saw somebody up, but uh, no, no. Okay, we're fine. All right. How are you guys tonight? Doing good. You're doing good? Yeah. yeah I, I've got this air conditioner on in the background, and people might be able to hear it or not hear it. Can you hear it at all? I don't notice. Most that. people don't ever hear it, but it drives me crazy. So, you know, I'll just have to uh, live with it. I, I don't know what I'm going to do about air conditioning here, to be very honest with you, to tell you the truth. But, you know. So, hello, Jeff. Hello, Charles. Hello, uh, to uh, uh, Josh, uh, we uh, are glad to all have you here. We are using the new machine now, right. and uh, it, it's not huffing and puffing, you know. So um, I, I thought it was a little out of sync, but I don't look like it now. Man, well. Anyway, be that as it may, I'm I'm just emotionally exhausted. 
Um, I had the... Uh, and where is Phil tonight? I guess maybe he's got one of his meetings where he goes and beats up on old people with his photography. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, um, I, um, I, as you know, oh, wait a minute. Oh, here he comes now. I guess I'm wrong. I guess I'm wrong. Let me see here. Well, there he is. He came in anyway. Let me see here. Let me put him in the fourth slot. Let's see here. Uh, scuba diver. Okay, there we go. Fourth slot. And uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Phil. How are you this evening? Hey, I'm great. And you? Uh, I'm, I'm okay. I've been better. Yeah. Uh, uh, you said you were going to go into, uh, I, I thought you were going to do your monologue on your uh, party. Yeah, and then I realized that I had a Bubs I hadn't played yet, and I got to interview him next week. And if I didn't play it this week, I'd have to just dump one with him because tomorrow night I've got my uh, wife, my ex-wife. So yeah. uh, anyway, so I thought I would just tell it during the show here. Sounds good. Uh, uh, I had the most depressing evening I've had in years last night. Uh, we had this, uh, WPLJ was a station that I worked at, what, 35 years ago, maybe? It's longer than that. 40? Uh, yeah, maybe 42. 40, 42, yeah. Yeah. I was As one, long as I know you. I yeah. was one of the first staff yeah. at this station. And um, uh, I guess... Um, how do I explain it? I'm, I'm so tired tonight that I'm having a hard time telling the story. So they had this. What happened was WPLJ has been sold, and it's been sold to a religious organization who's going to turn it into church music all day long. Okay? And it was a rock station for those 42, 43 years. Uh, and everybody is now bemoaning the end of WPLJ. Like, there's something to moan about. There's nothing to moan about. Uh, obviously, uh, Cumulus sold the radio station because it wasn't making the money. So, yeah. you know, I mean, th these kind of things happen. But everybody was moaning and crying over it, and I said, you know, which WPLJ are you moaning over? Because just because it had the same call sign for the last 42 years doesn't mean it was the same station or format over the last 42, 43 years. And when I started, it was, it was a progressive radio station. Basically, they hired a bunch of personalities like me and then said, go do anything you want to do. Really, literally. And it was really a cool radio station. We had a wonderful time with this radio station until the corporate guys got into it, until it started becoming formatted and, you know programmed and all of that and then it became what I would call uninspiring schlock all right so they had this big deal last night this big party where everybody's supposed to show up uh, to celebrate the life of WPLJ all its personalities all the people that worked at it one of the people that worked at it was was uh, Albert so he came to New York to be part of this and I I didn't know whether I was going to go to this thing or not, but I decided that I, if, he, if he was going to come into town, I would go to it. Now, Did mind he cut you, out early? What? Did he? No. No. Uh, okay. I mean, he knew everybody there because he had worked there over a period of 20 years. And so he yeah. knew all the people practically in the room. Uh, and I knew nobody. Okay, absolutely nobody. I met the music director that I worked with, and I think that was it. Is anybody still alive? Well, oh, yeah, there? most of us are still alive who were with that original crew. But I was the only one who showed up. I and a guy by the name of, of uh, I'm trying to remember his name now. can't remember his name right now. He showed you up. You were the only one that was ambulatory. No, no. There's Vin Skelsa, he's still alive, and uh, and and Michael Cascuna, he's still alive, and um, uh, you know there were some people Bennett like is still alive. Alex Bennett is still I, alive. I can't, 
can't I can't remember. Was the woman that was on there Allison Steele? No, that was over WNEW. Uh, okay. Yeah. The Night Bird or something. The Night Turd, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's what that's what my friend Zach used to do. He was over there for a while until he came over to us. And yeah. she would go on uh, after him, I think, and he would say, so stay tuned now for the night turd. But he would <laughs> mumble when he would talk, so you, he could have been saying the night bird, but he just always said the night turd. Yeah. Um, so I didn't mean to interrupt. Anyway, um, uh, so, I mean, I... I almost didn't go to this thing, and it seems like nobody from my group of people really wanted to go to this thing. Uh, so uh, I, I turned out to be the only one who went. Uh, I and this other guy, and I'm trying to remember his name now. I can't, I can't off, the, off, off the tip of my whatever uh, remember uh, what his name was. I, I, I'll remember it in a minute. I'll go look it up, and then I can... Oh, here, here's Tony. Tony just appeared. Okay, all right. Um, as if by magic. So anyway, um, uh, uh, Jimmy Fink was the other guy. He, uh, he was there. I don't know if he was there when I first went there, but he was there, we could say, was part of the first wave of people. Gee, Tony calls and then he leaves. <laughs> Fuck. He wants to show us the wallpaper and the... Uh, and yeah. the uh, curtains. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. Very don't, very don't call unless you can sit there for a while, Tony. Oh, sorry. I had to plug my charger. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I've, I've got to go check out the air conditioning to see if it's working. Okay. Jesus sorry. Christ. Anyway. So uh, I was the only one from that original crowd, that and Jimmy Fink, who came after me, uh, who, uh, who was even there last night and I went in I went in with 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 uh, with uh, Albert and Albert knows everybody and he's he's saying hello to everybody and he's hugging kissing everybody and they're saying hello to him and then he introduces me oh this is my friend Alex you know and I felt like I was I was his plus one <laughs> you know and all yeah. of this was starting to really depress me plus there is this uh, this woman her name is Carol Miller she was one of the first, uh, admittedly, one of the first women to, jocks to work in New York City. Uh, although Allison Steele preceded her over at NEW. And she really was part of kind of the second wave of people that came in, you know. Uh, and, and so I see her at the front door, okay? And she says to me, oh, yeah, you never used to come see me because you didn't think women should be disc jockeys. Oh, shit. She carried a 42-year grudge? I went, well, to begin with, that's bullshit. I said, I didn't talk to you because I didn't talk to anybody. I kind of was had my own little talk show, and I didn't have a relationship with very many people on the radio station. I said, but it wasn't because I didn't like women. In fact, the, I didn't say this to her, but the first female engineer at board op at ABC worked my show, and I was happy to have her there, you know. So, I mean, this was bullshit. And, but that's the first thing it said to me as I'm waiting in line to go into this oh, fucking shit. thing, right? So that yeah. starts me off on a good mood. Then I get in. And they have stickers with your names on it that you stick to your... No, uh, no, they didn't have stickers. So nobody no. knew who anybody was. And at our age, nobody knows what anybody looks like anymore. Yeah. yeah. You know? Uh, but anyway, I'm going to show the people. I don't know if you guys are going to... You guys can't see this, but you'll probably hear it. But this uh, was uh, the, the party last night. Uh, and uh, just listen, listen to the sound. Look at that, folks. Wall to wall people. I shot that up on a stairwell 
Okay, so I was apart from the kind of a, a, a little bit away from what should be the noise, but that's how the room sounded. You couldn't talk to somebody without straining your voice. Oh okay, all of those people actually work there. Over what forty-three years? Yeah, oh. I'm surprised. Oh, Albert. Yeah, but anyway, trying to even get. It walk forward was impossible, and, and getting out of there when I finally decided to leave was like I had to push people out of the way. I mean, it was just horrible. And, uh, and you know, then I'm getting messages from Albert like, where'd you go? Uh, uh, Willard Lockridge is here. Willard Lockridge was the general manager who took over from the guy who was running the place when I first went there and was a total fucking asshole douchebag. Okay, and I'm I wrote Albert back. I'm glad I left early. You know, I mean, it was just it was depressing. It was depressing because let's face it, uh, I'm the legacy of that radio station. Okay, there would not be that radio station if it weren't for me and about five other people who were the first personalities on that station. Alex, you couldn't right? have a conversation in that room. Well, wait a minute. Let me finish. What I'm saying is, it was like nobody knew who the fuck I was. Yeah. And if they knew who I was, oh, I was the guy that was on with Albert at Sirius. Mm hmm You know? And I'm going, fuck you. You know, I don't need this. It, it, it's, it's embarrassing, and I don't... You know, and I walked out of there really, totally, utterly depressed. Wow. You know? And almost, almost suicidal, I have to be honest with you. I mean, I just was just absolutely depressed and decided, uh, with the exception of Midnight Blue, I don't want anybody to talk to me about my career in New York City any longer. You know? I mean, we can talk about Sirius, you know, and we can talk about Midnight Blue, but don't talk to me about WPLJ. Because if, no if, they, if they don't remember me and I'm not important to them in some small way, then I I don't want to be known for that at all, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, WMCA, uh, you know, I mean, I probably did better work at WMCA or more original work at WMCA than I did at PLJ. PLJ was more of what I had already established doing at WMCA. Yeah. But I just, I just, you know, if, if nobody wants to recognize who I am, or you know, I, I'm not asking for people to praise me. It's just these people were so welled up in their themselves, and they were also, if you realize, this radio station went through several format changes, went through several periods. I mean, there was our period, and then there came this music period, and then the, this guy Scott Shannon got the morning show and became the program director. And then it was the Scott Shannon period, and then it was somebody else's period after that. And then I guess during those days, my wife had a period, and you know, I mean, it, it was just, it, you know, uh, it it made no sense to me. Why were they mourning this place? Because the call letters were going away. Because whatever station you were, whatever format or station you were associated with in your time hasn't existed in years anyway. You know? And all it is is a call sign. So, I do have a distinguishing characteristic here. Something which I, I, I think is important for me to mention. Uh, this show is going to religious music. Really. Bought by, by a church group going to religious music. Now we say that's terrible. Uh, I used to work at WMCA. You know what WMCA is now? It's a religious station. Said apparently, I'm, apparently, I'm a bad omen. You hire me and your station will go religion. One of my favorite was WWRL, uh, Top of the Dial. You remember that one? No. Uh, they had all the, uh, the black preachers and I'm going to send to all of you the gold cross that goes with it. You know, yeah, yeah. That, you know it was... Uh, well, it wasn't at the, or at the very end. Because it was the you know, top no, of the dial, no, it's, they thought they no, were closer to no, God. It's not the top of the dial. You mean it was all? It was like at 560 around there? No, 1600. No, that's, a, that's the bottom of the dial. Yeah. Oh, well, it was the higher number. No, it was the bottom <laughs> of the... It's a, no, it's considered the bottom of the dial. And those are all the all the low power stations. Even if they have the same power as a station at 560, for instance, 
uh, they don't have nearly the power. F 5,000 watts at 560 is 100 times better than at 1560. Well, how come 1600 sounded so clean? You know, because you were near it. Oh, huh, huh. It was a clean sound. No, it wasn't. It was AM. Never, AM never had a clean sound. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so uh, last night, it just, it, it just so depressed me. I just walked out of there just going, what do I need this for, you know? I mean, and then supposedly, uh, Al Albert then sends me a picture. They have my picture up on the, on the screen uh, with, right. with John and Yoko, and he said, they just had a tribute to you. And I wrote him back, and I said, if John and Yoko weren't in that picture, they wouldn't have shown that photograph. Yeah. yeah. You know. So I, I was just, I, you know, I was really, I, and I said to myself, I shouldn't go. And the fact is, these other people like Vin Skelza and Michael Cascuna, and I'm trying to think of who were the few other people that we had at the station at the time, um, they're all still alive. They didn't show up. And I know why they didn't show up, for the same reason I didn't want to show up. Because all we would be is an oddity. Nobody would know who we were because they're so welled up in this class reunion for their mediocre fucking radio station. So, you know. Yeah. How, how do you really feel? Oh, gee. I, I, was, no, I was really, I was, I was pissed. I was yeah. just, you know, bothered by the whole goddamn thing. You know. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, hey, you want to feel good about yourself? I, I was at a customer's house today. Yeah. Uh, she had a little bubble in her linoleum. Yeah. So I, I went to take a look at it. And uh, she says, uh, yeah, I've had a, a tough couple of months. My father died three months ago, and my husband died last month. And I'm seeing the picture of her husband, 54 years old. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I said, you know, what happened? Heart attack? Or, uh, she says, no, he committed suicide. Well, what was he? New York City taxi cab owner who had a medallion? Uh, no, worse. Uh, he had he had a business. His partner uh, embezzled a hundred thousand dollars. I guess that uh, uh, wow. put a dent in his business, and uh, uh, and uh, some some other things. And oh, they his doctor put him on Prozac, and he'd been on Prozac for two years. And uh, then all of a sudden, uh, he was depressed. Boom. Uh, you know, because when she told me that he died, uh, I was saying, you know, I really need to do a will or a trust or something. And she says, yeah, he died, no trust. Mm -hmm. And so when I asked what he died from, that's when she said she committed suicide. Well, I, if I, it, it, as bad as I was feeling last night, you might be able today to say, gee, two suicides in one day. Yeah, really. You know. Uh, but no, I was I I couldn't believe how depressed I was. Was it an open out. bar at least? Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I don't drink. I know well, you could have gotten a coke. I think they gave you a they gave you a drink ticket. I think you got one drink. Oh, okay, drink? generous. Huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did you have food? What? Oh, yeah. There they was this uh, there was this buffet which was so pathetic. I mean, how. There were 300 people there, and how they figured this amount of food was going to satisfy 300 people was beyond me. And listen, I don't want to put down the people who, who put this thing together. I mean, it was put together by a guy who's the program director at uh, WOR named Tom Cuddy, very nice guy. He meant well by all of this, you know. And I'm sure if I had stayed there, I think they had a whole bunch of all the people who were the personalities get up on stage. Uh, I would have been asked to do the same. Uh, they mentioned me in some article today that I was there. You know, they apparently didn't look to see how long I stayed, but they said <laughs> I was there. Uh, you know, but I just, I just felt, uh, I, I don't know, I just didn't. Uh, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't one of the best moments of my life. Yeah. And I, I wish I hadn't gone. To tell you the truth, I wish my better angels had, had prevailed. Okay. Yeah. You need to fill on your shoulder last night. Don't go, Alex. Huh? I, 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 I wouldn't have told him That's not to go. The corporate you know, one club. I, 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 I couldn't have anticipated uh, that that I would, how it would go. Yeah, no, I, I anticipated it wasn't going to be fun. You know, yeah. because it was going to be, it was going to be all the people who came after me, all the people who felt the you know, when the station was a big popular radio station. Now, popular mm -hmm. doesn't mean unusual and different and inspiring to people. I mean, the PLJ that I was part of 
people to this day remember legendarily. Okay. Yeah. The rest of it they remember of, oh, that was the number one station in New York. Well, you know, number one doesn't exactly mean interesting. Number one doesn't mean that it was uh, unusual. It just means that it was, well, fucking bullshit. And then to walk in and have this fucking Carol Miller pull this she deal She must off. really hate you, then. Well, I don't yeah. know. She sure, sure held, a, you know, a grudge for years. A grudge for that And one. I, you know, I mean, uh. I didn't want to say to her what I really should have said is the reason I probably never talked to her is I, I felt that as a broadcaster, she was mediocre. <laughs> you know, and and um, uh, you know, I, I I I just I was never impressed by her, and uh, if you talk to certain people, they will agree that I, you know, she was only distinctive because she was a woman doing it, and you know, there was already Alice and Steele, but I can't remember ever caring about the fact that she was a woman or that I didn't think women should be disc jockeys. In fact, I always felt that. You know, I'll tell you what should have been disc jockey. You were single then. I looked uh, at this crowd last night. I looked at this crowd, 30, 43 years of the history of WPLJ. I couldn't mm -hmm. find a black person in the entire room. Wow. Not one? Yeah. So you want to tell me about... I was... Oh, yeah, well, you know, I mean, I guess the I guess if there were black people, they were like me. They decided this party wasn't for them. Well, that's what they might have. Maybe you were the token Jew. Well, no, I'll tell you what happened. I think for a while, at least in this business, when I first started out and well into being in it, you didn't have blacks working at radio. There were radio stations where white people worked, and there were radio stations where black people worked. They were called the race stations. And so the white stations never had black personalities, although... When I did go to WMCA, which was perhaps one of the biggest Frankie. radio stations in the history of, yeah. of New York City, they had Frankie Crocker, who, right. was, who was black. Uh, and, uh, but uh, WPLJ, the last time I went there, I was looking. I said, Wait, I can show you that video again. Find me a black person, you know? Um, so uh, don't tell me about women and the, I didn't like women. Either. Fuck you, you cunt. You know, you were single back then. She wasn't good looking, or uh... no, no, okay. not, no, well, not, not, not to, to my her. way of thinking. There was another female announcer there who they brought in for a while, who I did have a relationship with, and you hear her voice every year, but I won't tell you who she is, and I don't won't tell you what she does. Ooh. But but you've heard her voice. I'll just say that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely wasn't Carol Miller. We know that. No, it wasn't Carol Miller. No, no, no. Uh, and uh, but but I, you know, I was always always very, you know, I certainly talked to this woman who went on before me, you know, because we got to know each other and we're very close, you know. So I mean, it, it's not, uh, you know. But that was the, what I'm po pointing that out as being was the first thing that happened to me when I walked into this place. It wasn't like, hey, Alex, how are you? And then, hey, you didn't pay attention to me. You know, yeah. you were overnight, right? I was overnight, yeah. Yeah, well, you don't see anybody anyway when you're overnight, right? I, 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 well, I remember I picked you up at like 6 o'clock in the morning to okay. give you a ride home. Oh, okay, I went on at 2 in the morning. I had yeah. a studio that was my studio. It was set up to be talk, okay? Mm -hmm. It's a small little, smaller than this room practically. Uh, and uh, the music was being done down the hall. Mm -hmm. So whoever the jock was, I never even saw them. I would go into my studio, and I would prepare the show, and then we'd go on the air, and whoever was in that other studio left and went home. So I never saw them. So, right. you know, it's not like I pop my head and go, Hi, Carol, how are you? You know, I didn't even know who was on before me, practically. Except that, you know, they, the engineer would point to me when I had to start talking. I'd start playing the theme. You know, they knew when the other show was over. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, uh, I, but uh, I just thought that in a, uh, a, a situation where there should be camaraderie uh, on some level, uh, uh, almost a let be, bygones be bygones atmosphere, this woman decided to, to hassle me. You know, she's a New Yorker, huh? She's yeah, a New Yorker. Yeah, 
but that's you know, what they do. Yeah. So she, yeah, yeah. But she's not British, so she won't know why I'm calling her a cunt. So, you know. Uh, but I, you know, I, it, I don't, I don't know. I just don't want. I just want to forget my whole period at WPLJ. They did, so I should too. You know, and and uh, yeah, yes, I was at WMCA, and uh, last night I was going to wear my good guys T-shirt, sweatshirt, <laughs> uh, but I decided not to, um, <laughs> because. Uh, but you know, I mean, Jesus. yeah, these, these people are. You know, I mean, it just uh, when a couple of years into me being there, the hacks moved in, you know. And the whole nature of the station changed, and the experimentation of the station changed. And the only thing that remained kind of the same for five years was me after 2 o'clock in the morning because they forgot I was there. Now, a lot of you go, 2 o'clock in the morning, who's listening at 2 o'clock in the morning? In New York City, about 30,000 About 30,000 yeah. people. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. uh, today, they, uh, stations don't go overnight because they're too cheap. But back then... Your overnights made you some money if you had a hit show. In my case, I had a hit show. I mean, I had, I had about 20,000, 30,000 people. More people listened to me at 2 o'clock in the morning in New York City than listened to me in the morning with a hit show in San Francisco. Yeah, well, okay. much bigger city, but yeah. bigger market. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, uh, so anyway, that, that's my story yeah. from last night. And I came home. I was home by uh, 8 o'clock, and I said I, I'd go on the air and do my show, and I went, fuck it. I'm taking the night off. You know. And I was even going to say tonight, fuck it, I'll take the night off. <laughs> I wanted to see if the machine was fixed. You know. Well, give well, us a machine report. So far, it's still working. Uh, you know uh, what happened? When the first time I turned it on when I brought it home, it crashed. Yeah. And then it never crashed again. So I think it was some kind of real residual crashing in there or something, mm -hmm. but it didn't. It didn't crash. So apparently they fixed it. Now, it, when you add people, is it uh, like before you were? Uh... Oh no, no. As a matter of fact, I felt that I was out of out of sync. Uh, I, and uh, let me see. I may have to call. Oh, here comes Patrick. If, if people have called before, somehow they they come into the group. Hello, Patrick. How are you? Um. Well, I guess better than, than you were last night. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Well, you saw the video that I had on my Facebook page, probably. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and I just got to say this. And I, I'm sure everybody on here will disagree with me, but mm. I don't go to any class reunion from high school because I don't give a shit. I don't either, because I don't like those people, and I didn't like them then, and I don't like them now. <laughs> I'm, I'm friends with a handful of people that I went to high school with, and that's it. And I see those people on a semi-regular basis, so I've never yeah. been for that sort of thing anyway. So. Right, right. So you didn't, you didn't care. Yeah. No, and and I, frankly, I I think your initial. You know, like you said, you're you're a good angel or whatever. Yeah, you probably should have just listened. But oh well, well, you, well, you, well you know, I had a, Albert came into town. Uh, Albert wanted to come to it because he should. He knew everybody in that fucking room. Yeah. You know, yeah. I didn't know anybody, and it wasn't like I was being introduced. You know, here's Alex. It started out this Alex Bennett, and yeah. then it, it turned into this is my friend Alex. So I felt like, I, yeah, I felt like I was his plus one, you know, uh, <laughs> and, 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 you know, because they all and I don't blame them. They were all getting into each other. They all knew each other. They hadn't seen each oh. other in years. And here they are, you know, but I'm in there and I don't know anybody. And occasionally I'd see like a really old guy and I figured uh -huh. well, he's maybe one of us. <laughs> but I don't know which one, and it would be embarrassing for me to go up and say, I'm Alex Bennett. You're, <laughs> you know. I saw one guy, really gray hair, old. I think his, his, the woman he was with was, like, uh, helping him into the room and stuff, and I'm thinking, it's got to be one of ours, you know. But I, but I looked on the list of people who were there, and the people who were in the first... 
what I called the first five, I think five or six, uh, weren't there. John Zacherly, who was there shortly yeah. after I got there, because I, I begged him to come over to WPLJ, uh, he, um, and he was very popular, uh, he, uh, he died a few years back, so he wouldn't have been there. Uh, Zach played a ghoul on television, you know, doing horror films. And uh, I figure if anybody could come back, it would be him, you know. <laughs> he didn't. And, and so it was, you know, it was just, yeah, why did I do it, you know? And but you never know. You may look back on this and say, oh, maybe you go down the road and say, it's something you did. What? Sometimes you don't know how things, no. like, you don't know how things can turn No, it was out. a total waste of my time, you know? Uh, I mean, I knew within the first half hour I had to get out of that fucking place. See, that's good. At least you knew to get out there at the right time. Yeah, I wish I knew that about my career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. anyway. I still like the Carol Miller story, though. That, she <laughs> must really hate him. Well, I, 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 Rub I, it in. Something happened. Hey, listen. She might have had a crush on you. I've had a lot. No. No, I hardly knew the woman. But you never know. Maybe she was carrying a torch. Yeah, you know, everybody used to talk to me, Carol Miller this or Carol Miller that or Carol Miller is over there. And uh, and I, uh, this is in the past. And I would go, yeah, but I, I never really knew her, you know. So, you know, where she got that attitude, I mean, somebody probably told her that, but that was my attitude about her. And I was, uh, I was completely, uh, you know, um, it, was, it was a wrong assumption on her part. I think she maybe heard that from somebody and, and held that with her forever. But I never had anything against her because she was... Uh, you know, uh, 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 a Tony female. Tony might be right. Huh? Anyway. So Tony might be right. She might have had a crush on you and she's mad because you ignored her. Uh, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> I, 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 you know, there, there's Ray. Hey, yeah, he's you didn't have to uh, call me back. It worked. Uh, it worked. Maybe they fixed but, it. Well, they didn't fix it because it I always says call was missed. But it seems as though, and it, these are all regular people. I'd like to know if somebody new tries to call, if they can immediately get in. You know, that would be the, the true test. So. I'm at a car dealership. Why? I just bought a new car. Did you? Oh, well, wow. Well, I was going to buy our leased car, but mm -hmm. because of Memorial Day, of a Memorial Day rebate of four thousand dollars it only cost a thousand dollars more to buy the same car new so i just bought a new one instead of What'd buying a two-year-old one What'd oh it's just a hyundai elantra yeah that's oh. your basic car it's a nice car yeah i mean for the money it's amazing uh -huh. uh, can you show us the car or is uh well it looks just like this is this is the one i'm returning right yeah, hold on here. A second. There we go. That's uh -huh. the one I'm returning, and the new one looks exactly the same. Oh, really? And it's but it, but it's two. It's brand new. This one is over two years old, and I only paid a thousand dollars more. So. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, because they have a Memorial Day rebate. No. Oh, is okay. it worth it to lease? Uh, well, I'm gonna just pay. We're gonna just do like three monthly payments and then pay it off. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, the idea of leasing a car never made a lot of sense to me. Well, I, I the only reason I did it with that one is because my parents were paying it for my son, so we never paid a penny. Well, back in the day... So I just let it... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day in San Francisco, I had two cars, and the second one I leased. But the first one I owned. Because the yeah. idea of not owning a car kind of bothered me, you know? My problem was I leased Well, the big once. problem is the mileage uh, yeah, limit. You can't, I couldn't yeah. get out of it. I had so many miles on the car I leased that I had to keep, I had to re-up the lease. And then finally, I just bought I it. Have, well, I you know, the thing is... I'll talk to you later. What? Uh, see ya. What's that? He, he, he had to go. He had to go. So why'd he call yeah. in the first place? Uh, you know. uh, he did a car segment. Huh? He gave us a car segment. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, you know, so anyway, so, I mean, um, so yesterday wasn't a happy day, but I don't understand. Somebody, I guess she kept some, she had some kind of grudge against me. You know? She did. 
It's interesting. Uh, here, here comes Ray again. What is this? You're back, Ray? I'm sorry. I ha sorry about that. I thought the guy, I thought I had to switch the cars. He's buying gas. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Did you get a full yeah. tank out of the guy? Four yeah, minutes? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. You know. You yeah. get a full tank? They're, they're, yeah. They're desperate. Hey, gas is $4 a gallon out here. It's over yeah. four. They're, de they're desperate, you say? On Wednesdays. On Wednesdays, Wednesdays I just, yeah, I just found out that like Wednesday is the best day to buy a car. Like no one comes in to buy a car on Wednesday. What is it? Desperate, <laughs> desperate Wednesdays? Is that it? Yeah, yeah. I see. Okay. It's the middle yeah, of the week. This place is empty, and so are all the other DG DG. It's DGDG.com. This guy, oh, yeah. this family owns Dorito so Rose. many car dealers. Oh my God, they must be so rich. These people. Well, either that or maybe it's a business that you don't get that rich in anymore. Well, about 20-something oh. 20, 20 years, 25 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, the, the two brothers uh, uh, were doing a, they had a house in Los Oh, that's and great. I actually did a Wait a minute, minute. that's either, that's either, it, that's either coming from you, either. Ray, or that's in Tony's neighborhood. One or the other. <laughs> I hope it's not no, my that neighborhood. that was me. It's not moving. <laughs> that was my neighborhood. Yeah, the two brothers. There was a dad, and, there, and then the, the brothers took over. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Well, anyway, anyway, anyway. They, they're as sleazy as they look. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. I uh, mean, they're really fair at all their dealerships. We bought. Car, they I mean, look like really... car dealers. Who knows if they really own it anymore? Gee, we got a, we got a lot of I people. Think they, we got yeah. a lot of people watching us tonight. Maybe I should only do one show a week or something. <laughs> you know, I'm serious. Dude, it's funny. You know, like we got like what almost forty people watching right now. Well, this could be Whoa. a suicide watch. It you could know? be. They could oh. be waiting for me to commit suicide, <laughs> or either that, or they want to know what happened last night. And I've already told the story. Yeah. You know that it was the most depressing evening of my life. Okay. You know. No, I know that sucks when you go to something like that and people don't even know who you are. Oh man, that's the worst. Well, it's not so much that, but that. I am always a history buff, and I always like to know what went on before I was around. Yeah. And I would certainly know who was at that radio station before I sat in that chair, you know? Yeah. And yeah. if they were at a party or something, I would go up and say, you know, thank you for, you know, being there in the beginning. Uh, you know, right. I, I don't want people to bow down to me or anything else. It was just I walked into this room where I was, was the first Okay. Yeah. Nobody yeah. else in that room could say they had been with that organization that long ago. I was one right. of the f first five. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and in that room, I was probably the one who'd been there the longest. All right. And I and I don't want people to bow down to me, but I I just didn't want to feel that lonely there either, you know. And it's kind of like. Uh, <laughs> And, and and sometimes he would uh, 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 Albert would introduce me as Alex Bennett. Or he's with, with WPLJ when it started, and they go, "Oh, that's nice." Yeah, that's it. yeah. There's they, no meaning to that. It has no meaning to it. No, because uh, they, they were there for their you know their collegial frat party that they were holding for their for their school year. Okay. Uh, but anyway, it's you know the one thing about Albert is that he, because he was there over a period of twenty, uh, uh, there t for twenty years over a period of something like thirty years. I mean, he was there on various occasions. Uh, uh, he knew a lot of people there, and a lot of people knew him just because he had been kind of a continuity of sorts. Um, but uh, you know, I mean. Uh, Ultimately, I mean, where was I the most successful? Was it New York City on radio? No, I probably was the mo became the most legendary in New York City, but my pop my biggest popularity had to be in San Francisco. You know. Um, yeah. They just did a um, KQED today. Uh, your your friend, uh, what's his name? The the political comedian. Uh, oh, Will Will, Will, Durst. Uh, Will Durst was on there and three other local comics and they were talking about the punchline on Michael Krasny's show going yeah. out of business. Yeah. Uh, 
um, <laughs> yeah, yeah um, you know, I'm mixed about that. But, you know, hey, if, if you're around long enough, things are going to come to an end. True. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing mm -hmm. lasts forever. And, and uh, you know, so the punchline's going. It was going to go eventually. It wasn't going to last for the next five centuries, you know? No. Yeah. And comedy is not as hot as it was when you were there. Well, no, it's different. No. It's different, yeah. you know? It, it you know so are movie theaters, I mean well, yeah. in another couple of years you're not even gonna see fucking movie theaters. Well, maybe they'll put comfy chairs in the comedy. No, clubs. no, the, the, you, you know, <laughs> all these things pass. Wow. All right. And the problem with comedy now is you go and do your Netflix special and you've just blown an hour's worth of material. You know, in fact, that's why Steve Martin said he quit comedy. It's because by the third comedy album, he, you know, he says, once you've done a three comedy albums, you've used up all your material. I don't agree with that. I think people go to the live show to hear the material and they want to hear no, it over No, no, no. that's in a again. club. That's in, I'm not yeah. talking about a club. I'm talking about doing uh, the, I'll tell you, you know why Vaudeville died? Didn't die because it, television. Wasn't, because it wasn't good. No, it died because of Ed Sullivan. Because somebody yeah. would go on, you know, who, who could t twirl uh, plates on a stick to, uh, <laughs> to, 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 the saber dance. Uh, and, and he could do that once on Ed Sullivan, and then he'd blown the whole act. Yeah. All right? Where, he, where he had taken that, that five-minute act on the road for 20 years prior to it and gone to many different towns and played to many different people who, to whom this was new. And now he goes on Ed Sullivan and in one showing, the whole country sees the act. He can never do it again. Topo right. Gigio did his act every week. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. That was a fucking puppet. That's a fucking puppet, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, no, but he was no, realistic. No, but, but no, but it, I, I'm, that's not what I'm saying, Phil. I said this is why I vaudeville know. was dead. Yeah. yeah. Not why Italian puppets were dead. <laughs> it yeah. was a puppet? Oh, God. Now I'm Same thing's true with radio. Why is, why is WPLJ going away? Because it probably should have years ago. You know? And just now it, it ran out of gas. It ran out of uh, somebody wanted to buy it, and they're putting religious music on there because they think that's going to do better than playing rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, radio is so fickle. Yeah. Radio has got to be the most fickle form of entertainment. No, I don't know if it's Man. fickle. I don't know if it's Well, it fickle. just seems like they just dispose of people so easily. Yeah. Well... Th th my That's problem, my problem with radio, automated. my problem with radio has always been the uh, total mediocrity of it all, you know, because yeah. the people who are making the decisions are not performers. Uh, they are, right. they are salesmen, and yes. they run the radio stations, and uh, they have no idea hey, what talent. How many is. of those those sales? The only guy, the only guy I the, the only guy I ever worked for. Oh, my car's ready. Hey, I'll have to say goodbye. Oh, Thanks. okay. Sorry. Goodbye. All right. Thanks a lot. We'll, Bye. We'll, we'll, Bye. We'll see you later. Bye. Uh, let me see here. He is in the number what splop spot here? Uh, three. Uh, he, he was in uh, number, well, here, I can just change here. He was in three. He was in three? No, he wasn't in three. I'm looking at it. No, he's it's not three. in three. No. He's Jeff? He's in nine. Three. No, he's in seven. Oh, seven. Seven. Yeah, oh, you he, go across. One, two, three. He's four, in six, seven. Number. Oh, this is a different screen. This is not the uh, first screen. No. So therefore, the first screen he would have been three. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I'm going down. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's talk about something here. Uh, J uh, Josh, I want to know how you feel. Did you hear what went on today in Washington? Oh, I heard a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. What was your take on it? Well, my take is I don't like this show because you guys were mean to me, so I'm taking my microphone and I'm going home. <laughs> Fuckers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. pretty much in what other words, In other words, yeah. the needs of the people were preempted yeah. by the needs of his ego. Right. Yeah. I mean... You're going to 
kiss my ass, <laughs> or you're gonna have to get another president. Yeah, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to stop investigating me, or I'm not gonna build a bridge so people don't go across one that's gonna crumble. You know, Trump it, it, vows no more legislation while under investigation. Yeah. Now, uh, how how is that? Is that presidential, Phil? Now, well, come on, be honest. Uh, it's better than uh, steal uh, than Avenetti stealing. Oh, no, the, no, uh, no, 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 no. Fuck you, fuck you. You don't change the topic. That has nothing to do with it. Oh no, I, you know I don't know the whole story behind <laughs> what they're doing. You know what happened? Oh, no, was, you know the it whole. It was supposed story. to go into negotiations, and Pelosi, fifteen minutes before she got there, made a made a thing that said that. Uh, uh, she she held a press conference and said that Trump was uh, uh, what what did she a call cock him? Cocksucker. He called him a cocksucker. No, she didn't call him. He's, a he's doing a cover up. Yeah, cover up, a cover up. So he and he says off. I and you know what he said? I don't do cover ups. Then what yeah. was paying off Stormy Daniels? Yeah. Well, obviously that was a donation. Is is that what is a donation? To, no, to, it, it was, was his donation to vaginas. I see. He was being blackmailed. <laughs> you know? and, and obviously, this Avenetti is a real. No, no, no. no forget Avenetti. I don't money. care about that story. It is not important. Uh, it's another looky loose story. We're talking about a president of the United States who refused to talk about infrastructure until the they they dropped all charges they're thinking of bringing against him now. That had, one does not have anything to do with the other, and one is something that is the welfare of Americans everywhere, and also will give them jobs as well. And yet he won't talk about it because he wants them to drop the case against him. Yeah, no do-overs, no no, no no, 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 no. This is wrong, Phil. This is highly immoral. What do you no, think? It's about what do you time think? somebody stood up this uh, I, I don't care what you think, Phil, because we know what you think. I know. Josh, what, what, thoughts? <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, well, I mean, I think that even though, I mean, look, you know, Bill Clinton was, you know, treated just as unfairly, if not more so than Donald Trump. I mean, Bill Clinton was actually impeached. OK, you know, the big I word, you know, they they actually uh, rolled that out for for Bill Clinton. And yet <clears throat> he still managed to get things done you know, uh, during that period of time. I mean, the impeachment came, you know, pretty near the end of the presidency. But it was, a, I think we can all remember, it was a long, slow, steady yep. road to get to that point. I mean, he was constantly being badgered about things. But yet, we can look back and say that a lot of stuff got done. And I think that President Obama, for example, was oftentimes... Uh, oversight was given over you know was over him you know uh, someone today i heard use the word you know relentlessly which i think is true i mean they looked into everything that president obama did and you know i think that we look back now and we all kind of agree he was even if you didn't like uh him politically i think we can all though agree that he was probably one of the most you know decent individuals to hold the office in the modern era right you know yeah. I mean, if, if you didn't think he did a very good job, fine, but I don't think anybody, you know, goes around, oh, you know, that Obama, he was such a snake, you know, that, that, that little crooked, you know, I mean, a pretty decent guy, and he was investigated for many things, and yet things still got done. I mean, if, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't like it, that's fine, but you cannot use uh, the 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 well-being of the American people and of the American democracy as a bargaining chip. Well, well he, his argument you was you, can't, you, you can't legislate while you litigate, and the answer to that question is, yes, you can. Right. Uh, yes, uh, Charlie has his hand up. Yeah, the, uh, it's the same deal when he shut down the government, punishing the government workers because he couldn't get his way with, with the wall. I mean, he was holding the people hostage to get his political point across, and that's exactly what he's doing now. It's called negotiation. Did, did I read that? Uh, that uh, uh, did I hear that uh, they spent uh, the government gave Trump one point seven billion dollars for his wall last year, 
and that for that 1.7 billion, they did a mile and a half of wall. Yep. Uh, they're challenging that. Uh, <laughs> that, that Who's that, challenging that? That Bloomberg said that. And uh, it's being challenged because they're saying that there was like 400 miles of wall that was built. No. And, and they're talking about how much was built in 2019, not 2018 and not 2017. They were talking about uh, Phil, how much Phil, was built in 19. Phil, he didn't build eight, 400 miles of wall. He did not build 400 miles of wall. That is well, a lie. You, we'll see. You know, I, if he did, if going he down. if he did, he probably finished the whole goddamn wall. Well, I don't think so. But you know, Trump. Well, how is long saying, do you think the wall Trump is? is how long do you think the wall is? Uh, well, the, probably. I think it's seven hundred miles uh, that were that were built before Trump was there. Yeah, and but how long do you think the whole wall would be if you went from one, the beginning of the wall to the end of the wall? Uh, well, it's at least 700 miles, and uh, uh, see, you don't even know. Well, I I don't know because it's being contested. One party says no, that they, no, but they you built don't, a mile and a half, how much and wall, another party says they built 400 you're not, miles. You know how much wall necessarily has to be built? 2,700 yeah. miles. 2,700 miles. I'm sorry, Phil. Nothing close to that. Well, that would be miles. what it is, oh, coast because to coast. The, the wall stops in the Gulf of, at the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. Okay. Well, I yeah, maybe, uh, yeah. it goes in and out. It's more like it's more like fifteen hundred miles, something like that. All right. Yeah. That's a lot of wall. Well, you yeah. save a lot of money that way. Well, here comes Kevin. Let's see. Hey, Come on, Kevin. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you on. Where, where, come on, Kevin. There we go. Hey, Kevin, missed call, but there's Kevin. This is very weird. This is a very weird thing that's happening here, but I don't care. It's weird on the good side rather than on the bad side. Yeah, Let's I even see. called on my iPad, too, and it's different. Did anybody get a thing that said too low uh, bandwidth no. or something? No, I didn't either. This, you know. Yeah. Uh, but that, uh, that, was yeah. coming prior. Yeah. Uh, it was going to work or not. And Kevin, what did you think about this thing that went on today with uh, Schumer and Pelosi and uh, yeah. the orangutan? I thought it was a thought it was the same old bullshit. I thought he was starting his, his same old uh, his same old uh, tactics again. Well, the thing is, in my feeling is the. Uh, the world out there that we live in uh, <clears throat> needs this infrastructure and bad. Well, that's the thing is, I thought he was actually going to yeah. start talking about something. Yeah, worth and, and, while. and that has nothing to do with the fact of how he feels about Pelosi or that his feelings are hurt or anything else. But he's not ruling by common sense or by what he should be doing for a living. He's ruling uh, based upon his own personal <laughs> feelings that they've been hurt. And now mm. we're not going to get that bridge. Let people fall into the uh, into the ravine, you know. And we need that shit. Oh, you bet yeah. you. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, it really is personal with him because it's not even very smart politically. I mean, the best thing that he could do would be to, you know, cut some kind of infrastructure deal, for example, <laughs> and start, you know, with the most simplest of things, road paving and bridge things, and then run around for re-election and be like, look, you know, the economy's great, and I'm paving your roads, and I'm building the bridges, and all this time, you know, they badger me and badger me and badger me. I mean, I'm not saying he'd be right. I'm saying this is how he should try to sell it. You know, yeah. they just, they just, there, there was... their, you know, but he, he, you know, yet I'm still getting it done, you know, and I mean, I guess that's what I'm saying is he's not even able to set aside his personal differences mm -hmm. when it would be good for him. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, uh, there, there's more you know? to this, Josh. By the you way, we've been, we've, it, been, we've, he, been, we've been joined by, uh, let me see here. Rob. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, <laughs> joined by Rob uh, Alfano. You but, see, oh, here we they were supposed to determine, uh, Trump was supposed to present how he was going to get the money mm -hmm. uh, for the infrastructure. So, uh, because they'd already decided on what they were going to do, how much they were going to do it for, now it was Trump's turn to say, this is where the money is going to come from, 
And uh, I, I don't he know. Did. Maybe he wasn't prepared. He you did. Uh, Rob, you've just joined us. What he, do you, of course he did. What, what do you think about the developments today? That's what this meeting was supposed to be about. I'm in total agreement with Patrick. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't give a fuck. Is it now? I'm giving it, up. I don't watch. I have not watched a newscast. I don't pay attention to the news. You, you got. You're getting so like. You're like, I, you're getting, like you're, you're, you know what though, you're, you're, Rob? You're right. I, I, my wife said, "Oh, did you watch your political shit all day today?" I said, "No, I watch car shows all day. I watch that's Motor it. Trend all day." But you <laughs> know you what? Anything. The one, one, thing, games, the one I, thing I did anything. see was that I saw that one part and I went. Well, I guess I didn't miss much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same old shit. Actually, but, what... you know, it's 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 something that it's something that he, like like Josh was saying, he could have he could have run with this. Do you know what I? It would have yeah. perfect. Do you know what I've and been watching? Was... What I've been watching, rather than that kind of shit, I've been watching maybe what I think is the funniest show on television. Has anybody seen What We Do in the Shadows? No. 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 Oh. Oh, Tell me, I need something. <laughs> it's on FX. It's a comedy, broad comedy about vampires. But oh, I mean, really? it's hilarious. They live in Staten Island. Oh shit! Uh, and and they've been told by they've to, been told by the Baron, who is the chief vampire, that they must take over the world. And so far, they've conquered a street and a half. And there's a there, there are a bunch uh, there are three vampires and then there's a fourth vampire, but he sucks energy by boring you to death. <laughs> and it's it's just it's hilarious. It was taken from a movie that was made in New Zealand called What We Do in the Shadows, and it's very funny. So I, I recommend it highly. What's it called again? What We Do in the Shadows. It's on FX. Check it out. What time? Uh, I don't know what time it's on, but uh, okay. you know, if you've got like a, a smart Might TV, you can probably yeah, no, I'll you, look it up. Yeah. yeah, you could do that. You know, Patrick's got his hand up. Yes, That's Patrick. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, like today, it was actually a decent day, weather-wise, mm -hmm. in my neck of wood. So I'm mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I don't need to sit in front of the television. I mean, and you know what? I felt good, and I came home and I was happy, and then I then I ate. Yeah. And, and I I don't I don't have this consternation of, oh my God, he walked out of a fucking meeting. Who cares? She was probably a fucking cunt in the meeting too. <laughs> <laughs> no, she she didn't have time to be a cunt. She uh, they, they that 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 was one of the problems. I mean, he would. He for th he left the room within three minutes and they didn't be, weren't able to say anything to him. I, I like the idea the guy stands up for himself instead of being a punk. You know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But it it affects you, Phil. Like it affects you and it affects the infrastructure. And I just uh, nothing's changed in fifty years. The infrastructure has been falling that's apart bu bullshit, for fifty Phil. years. Bill, that's the point. Yes, that's the, that's point. the point. All right, so he'll he fix it. The but there's a, I mean, yeah. But there's a cost to that kind of stuff. I mean, that's like the best player on your football team getting mad at some guy who called him a name and getting fucking suspended for three games because he got in a fight, and then, you know, you're without him for three games. I mean, it's like if he had just fucking shut up, he, you know, I mean, what's better for the team? You know, I mean, that's, I mean, sometimes it's hard to do, and it's tough, and it's not easy, but sometimes it's what you have to do. And if there's one job in the world, right. That requires that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's the job that he went around and asked for. You know, I yeah. mean, he, he didn't he didn't inherit that. You know, some job that he didn't want. I mean, it's not a birthright. You you got to ask for it, and and you got to you, you got to spend a shit ton of your own time and a shit ton of your own money to get it. I mean, you literally beg to get that job. So. I mean, he has the right to operate however he wants when he gets there. I, I mean, I will not deny that. But I'm just saying, you know, it's not a job for thin-skinned, grudge-holding, you know, fucking spoiled little brats. And that's exactly what you have. It's just, you, you know, I mean... <laughs> it's and like you say, if nothing's been done for 50 years and he's walking in there saying he can do everything and he's got the chance to do it, then do it. 
Yeah. Well, and I mean, and you, my, and my you, issues with him are not. You don't let somebody slap you in the face 15 minutes before they walk in and then give them $2 trillion. Phil, worth. Phil, 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 yes, Phil, Phil, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Phil, Phil, yes. Hold on a second. Phil, yes, you do. Because one thing doesn't have anything to do with the other. And what you're talking about is something for the welfare of the American people that needs to get done that has nothing to do with whether you don't like what this woman just said about you. That's being thin-skinned, and it's not being very presidential. And my understanding well, is it was reversed. They were, they were going in there talking, and then she came out and said that there was a cover-up going on because he shut it no, down. It no, no, no. She before. said it before the meeting. She yeah. said it before okay. the meeting. Well, I, but I he already had the signs around, but, made up. How do you know what she was going to say? Yeah. Yeah. He already had the signs ready to go. He knew what he was going to do. He before. saw her on TV. No. No. Uh, making no, the statement. no but he Here had... He did you, this had all the signs ready for his little speech afterwards <laughs> that were referring to what he was going to do in the meeting, and those things had to be put together a day beforehand, Phil. Well, that's preparedness. Oh, you know? Jesus Christ. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, uh, he could have uh, just shined it all Patrick on. Has, on. Patrick has his hand up. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, I mean, it, like Josh was saying, there's a point at which you act like a professional. Even if you don't like what's happening, you, you sit there. It, it's like mom used to say if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Yeah. Just sit there and shut the fuck up. And if she ran him out like the bitch that I think she is, <laughs> you just take it. And then once she's done running her mouth, then you ask her, Are you done running your mouth? And if she's done, then you can say, okay, this meeting over because we've achieved absolutely nothing except you berating me or uh, whatever it is. <clears throat> but you but don't he, just he, up and leave he, it down. The, the yeah. thing that I will say that annoyed me that I saw on the news is he goes and he has a fucking news conference about leaving the fucking meeting. Crow. So did she. No. Yeah. Yeah. Up to both of them. And the yeah, what, what? I heard it on C SPAN. Phil, Phil, long. Phil, they had to set up the microphones for them. They didn't have to set up the microphones for Trump. That mic, Those microphones and that sign and all of that were sitting there waiting while he was holding the meeting. So he knew what the outcome of the meeting was going to be, and he knew it a day ahead of time. Okay. The President of the United States so says make the signs. They're made in 10 minutes. No, they're not made in 10 the, minutes. The, the, they were, the they, were, it, it, they, were stated, they were made the night. They were. They were stated. They were made the night before. <clears throat> Why didn't he just let her go off? Say, "Are you done? We're here for infrastructure. Let's talk about infrastructure and get, get going." Because that's the main thing. That's the main thing the country needs. They can keep on bitching and whining and squawking at each other and calling each other names. Get shit done. She didn't have a chance to call him any names. Uh, exactly. I mean, you know. Thin skin ain't gonna get you nowhere. Well, it's not. It, it, it who it winds up hurting is you and me, and the rest yeah, of the country. In the end, and that, and, you know, and, he should just say, "Okay, are you done? Now we're here for a reason. Let's move on." Yeah. But he doesn't. He goes, "Wah wah wah." I'm gonna go out to the microphone and say you called me names. By the way, she's gonna go out there and say the same thing. By the way, they Rob, what 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 are you watching on your on your iPhone? No, I'm not watching anything. I'm just looking up something. That's all. Oh, I and see. It has, and it has nothing to do at all with, with politics. Yeah. I uh, thought you were watching baseball. Patrick has his hand yeah. up. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, hockey's <laughs> almost over, too. Me, <laughs> to me, uh, that type of a meeting is like an argument between a husband and wife. Yeah. You just uh, you let her run her mouth, and then when she's done, or he's done, then like, like Kevin said, are you done? Okay, now let's move on to whatever, you know, it, it just, it's bickering. It's not even arguing, it's just bickering. It, it, it pay yeah. bullshit. Yeah, but, but she didn't even have time to say, she didn't have time to say anything. Okay. She said it before the meeting. No, no, Phil, Phil, forget about what she said before the meeting. That was on an entirely different subject than infrastructure. Okay? Period. Who gives a fuck? Let's pave the roads. Let's fix the fucking bridges. Jesus Christ. <laughs> People are dying out there. It doesn't matter if it was said on a different platform or whatever because he does not like being criticized. 
So it could have been said outside the room. It could yep. have been California, or it could have been said inside the room. The reaction would have been the same. Yeah. If it has been said on Twitter, he'd have gotten upset. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you know, I mean, but but all I'm saying is is that that. You, 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 he's saying that he will not pass any legislation until the Congress stops their investigation against him. Well, what does one have to do with the other, you know? And why do you hold up legislation for the people because you want to somehow interfere in the process of the government? It's really an amazing stance he took. Yeah. And, and one that comes very close to obstruction of justice. How, how do collusion. you collusion. How, how do you, how do you feel, uh, Josh? Is, is that is there something to be said for that being obstruction of justice? Well, uh, I, I don't really think that would be considered it. I mean, and and that that's nearly impossible to prove. I I, I think it's an, an obstruction in the sense that we can look at it as voters, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 look at it that way now i think that uh <clears throat> i think he uh I, i've come to the pretty much to the conclusion that i do think he obstructed justicely you know during the the Mueller investigation i mean i think that becomes a little bit more clear each day and i think that's why he's taking so many steps to stop it now you know and and stop it in its tracks because i think the more information that comes out the worse that it gets for him, uh, you know. I mean, his actions today, I don't think amount to that. I think they yeah, well, well, amount well, well, to well, stupidity. What I'm, what I'm mean, saying is, when you say, <clears throat> when you say that uh, I'm not going to pass any legislation unless you stop your investigations, uh, the the two ha ha he he claims that you can't legislate and litigate at the same time. Mm -hmm. Where is that written? Of course you can't. Well, right, and that's that's a ridiculous notion. Right. He's guilty of obstruction of progress. That's for damn sure. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. want our bridges. You know, we want our. Uh, we want want to safely go across a bridge without it collapsing. So, you know. Tell you what, and, and I mean, and he's he's just he's just guilty of you know basically <laughs> you know being stupid because if he were smart and he were observant, you know, rule number one that he could have learned was that given the opportunity. Um, if, you know, Democrats are in power, you really just have to, you know, hand them the rope and they will hang themselves. I mean, every time, you know, I mean, if, if he would just play his cards decently, you know, he would be in a great position. But that's what I'm saying. You know, he just lets his grudges, you know, yeah. get ahead of what's best for even himself, you know. So, but hey, that's, that's good for us. Let's just sit you back know, and watch. You, you know? think that... If anything would would uh, give him a partisan, uh, would make him look partisan and and bring him across the aisle would be an infrastructure because nobody's going to argue against that. Right. Do you nobody's think that his that. supporters? So that the, you know, do you a think bit that of, this is throwing red meat to the supporters? That you know he's got a scenario here where they're attacking him for his taxes. They're attacking him for uh, a number a number of other things. They want to get Hope Hicks, and and they're doing subpoenas, and they're talking impeachment. And uh, so by p doing what he did, changes the um, uh, conversation, and uh, also uh, gets his base Look, behind his him. Base, his base are— Which is me. Uh, his his you know. base, well, I, I don't think his base is you, really— his base are basically people who are stupid and missing a tooth. Okay, ah, that's I mean, not true. No, that's what the media no, will tell people you. People who don't know. No, I mean, come on. Uh, that's what I, Hillary I, said. I, that they're deplorable. You, you disappoint me because Ooh. I can't believe that a man the Nazis who, are deplorable. who has half a brain like you do, and I think you have at least half a brain. Uh, Which half? Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, but, could even but find you, this behavior acceptable. You know, yeah. T I don't Je find Jeff, his Jeff looks acceptable. like he has something to say. I, Je I don't. Uh, find I, his Jeff behavior. looks like he has something to say. Jeff, okay, do but you? I don't find his behavior acceptable. I find that he's fighting his battle the way he fights it. Yeah, <laughs> Jeff. I think it's time for Trump to get a new job. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably the best comment we've had all night. Simple. Alex, Alexa Hente. 
Yeah. But do you think Trump? that all those people that were half half way back and at this time before the next election where everybody's starting to get warmed up and all this bullshit's been going on for the last year and a half or whatever and they're starting to talk infrastructure and things like that that he would take the the, the stance that that he might start crossing over the aisle and doing stuff to bring some of those other people that were kind of half on the fence and said oh let's take a chance on Trump that he would try and draw some of those people back in by jumping over the aisle and start he can't do that in, you know, saying, doesn't have let's he let's, can't do that he doesn't Bill, have to Bullshit. Bill Clinton Bill right. Clinton coined the phrase it's the economy stupid and that's what it is. It's the economy. Actually, no, that wasn't Bill started, Clinton. If he started, what, who was? I think it came before the then. I think. I think it was. I think it was Reagan. In. No, I think it was Bill. No, it wasn't Bill Clinton. No. No, no, no. It, it was his uh, political advisor, the uh, uh, James. Uh, oh, Carville. Yeah, Carville. Yeah. yeah. But it sounds to me like he's just going to bet on his same old base, <laughs> and uh, you know he's lost Trump a lot of those. Can't. Things. I don't Trump, think so. Some Trump of them, anyway. Do that. Trump, Trump can't do that. He cannot, uh, he cannot cross the aisle because his base would go against him for that. That's what I and said. That's but, he needs to be loyal to that. You're James base. Carville, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. But there's a lot of people that took a chance on Trump, right? And there's a lot of people that were not actually Trump fans, and they went over and said, "Let's take a chance on him." And that probably got him over the hump, right? No. What got him I over the that. hump was uh, the swing states. I think and there was a lot of people that said, you know, they're, they're not, they didn't like Hillary, and they were going to take a chance on Trump. And there was a lot of those uh, polls and surveys that went out and looked around and found people that did that, said, you know, I, I voted for Trump. I, I took a chance on him. I'm really sorry I did that. And I don't know anybody a besides a lot Bill. of people that did that. They're not going to get those people anymore. Mo yeah, most people know, like me aren't sorry. No, you know, I understand. I don't know that, anybody but... besides you that isn't sorry. Everybody yeah, else I talk to is like because yeah. everybody else you talk to is a Democrat. <laughs> no, no, that's yeah, not true. And, and, you know, and they're still trying to redo the election. And and you didn't you get know. what you wanted out of the Mueller report. So now you're you're going to try something else. Bill, you said that again. You keep saying that, and the You've country. You got those saying, people that are going to jump. We you know, don't. We, we didn't get anything or... out of the of the Mueller report. What we got out of the Mueller report is what his boy told everybody and stalled that report coming out for weeks. So that became yeah. the narrative. Well, yep. That's what we got out of the Mueller. Report. But there was no collusion, and the Mueller the the whole investigation was based so on why, a false. So why is no, uh, it's not. You know, the Pfizer the report. did interfere with the election. Yeah, but it wasn't Trump that had anything to do with it. Yeah, it the, the Russians interfered the while, uh, while the Russians Obama. Uh, here is, everybody, uh, you know, I'm getting a headache. Oh, yeah, okay. Kind of thing, you know, I, 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 no, yes, okay, I'll say it said no collusion. But it didn't say no, no, uh, no obstruction of justice. Right. And that right. Right. is where the Democrats are making their <laughs> investigation. They're, you know, enough with the no collusion, no uh, whatever. Uh, the fact is that the Mueller report did not say that he maybe wasn't guilty of, uh, of, of uh, obstruction, obstruction of, uh, obstruction of obstruction. judge. No, because it's not his There's job to charge cold. anybody, Phil. It's his job no, to it wasn't. say that. It wasn't his uh, job to, he said, I will not Congress. make a decision on that. Congress's job. Yeah. That's why they're no, doing the best job. To, uh, anyway, overstate. enough of that. Enough of that. Enough of that. Uh, we have, uh, as of now, count them, and this is amazing, 24, 24 people running for the Democratic uh, candidacy. Yeah. Any comment from anybody? I like Andrew Yang. Huh? Uh, you know, if I was going to vote for a Democrat, I like Andrew Yang. Do you like you Andrew think Yang? 30? Why, why do you like Andrew Yang? He's brilliant. And uh, he uh, now he has some ideas uh, wait, to wait deal with things. He's actually got a plan. Yeah. You know, unlike Biden, who's just an empty vessel, you know, uh, who will say anything or do anything, uh, but has has no uh, meat to him. Uh, Andrew Yang, 
even though he wants, for, for instance, Milton Friedman is one of the economists that says that the oh. basic income. Now, I don't necessarily agree with this basic income thing, but Andrew Yang wants to give each person over 18 twelve thousand dollars, and that, uh, and they can buy health care with it. They can they can do what they want with it. You know, it it, it just it kind of makes okay a little okay bit of Phil sense. Phil shut up for a moment. I'll tell you why to shut up. Andrew Yang doesn't have a chance of getting the nomination. Okay, uh, no chance at all. Doesn't matter. No chance at all, Phil. Well, it does as long matter. as you it keep does matter. he's got no chance, no, but he's, we he's have, smart. We have to talk about people who reasonably have a chance of getting the nomination. So who has yeah, a but, reasonable chance of getting the nomination, people? Uh, Elizabeth guess, Warren had lots of plans. Nah, nah. She's, have, she's put out more plans and studying things to do than any other candidate. In fact, she, all the other candidates combined. She brought out a, a, she, wait a minute. Wait a minute. She, brought out, she brought out a jacket with two pair of plans. Yeah. Hey, the DNC has already decided it's going to be Joe Biden. That's They're right. already fixing it for Joe Biden. And, you know, <laughs> you know, these other people, they're wasting their time by debating. It doesn't matter yeah. that you, this decision's already been made. I agree. I heard him speak the other day. And while I'm not a big fan of Biden's at this point, I mean, there are a lot, just like you, there are a lot of people I would rather see. Uh, but uh, reasonably, I don't think that they have a chance. Uh, although Mayor, uh, what's his name, Mayor Pete, Buddha Edge, I, I think has somewhat of a chance here. Nah. You know, uh, and, and he carries himself very well. But the thing is, I saw Biden give a speech the other day in Philadelphia, and he does appeal to the common man much better than Trump does. All he says is, I'm not Trump. No, no, Vote for no, me. Wait a minute. No, 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 Phil. Then you're not listening I'm to I'm a speeches. nice guy. I'm no, from the Midwest. No, he's, um, he, know, he, Pennsylvania. He, he is talking to the working man. Okay? And women. <clears throat> he is speaking directly to them. And yeah, but he's the speech, got, he's the speech got nothing. I, the, speech I, spe, the speech I saw had a lot more substance than anything Trump has, has ever proposed. Yes, uh, 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 <laughs> Rob. Yes, Rob. <laughs> Rob. You know, one of the, you know what I'm sick of seeing is headlines like America is ready for a gay president. Who gives a rat's ass what sex, what yeah. color? Well, well yeah. but you haven't heard what, that. From, we're ready for a president who could do the job. But you haven't, you, ha you haven't heard that. About you, anything else. Yeah, you haven't heard That's that. You good. haven't. Uh, uh, Rob, you haven't heard that from Mayor Pete. As a matter of fact, he never brings that up. You know, he just says, I'm gay, that's it, now let's move on. Yeah. You know, well, all I'm saying is, and I, but I, I'm saying is it's stupid, though, like, Rob. It's, like it's time we had a Jewish president, but we're never going to yeah. have that. How yeah. about an uncircumcised president? Uh, an uncircumcised president, yes. America's ready Can you do the job? Yes, yes, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Yeah, I'll work for tips. But uh, Alex, yeah. you're right. It, it sounds Alex. wrong. Right. It sounds tacky. Wait a minute. I'll, I'll sell carpet for food. Patrick has his hand up. Yes, you Patrick. Love the carpet, the White House. You charge a triple. Patrick. Hey, at least the cripples have already had our president. So. Yeah. And, what? Wait a minute. The cripples? Who? Who was crippled? Who was the crippled? socialist FDR. FDR. Oh, FDR. Oh, you're FDR. right. Hey, you're that's right. a good point, Patrick. Yeah. Yeah, he was good. okay. But they yeah. hit it. They hit it because they didn't want to make him look weak. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, they hit it. You, you, People didn't know he was crippled while he was president because, he, you know, it wasn't like it is today. There are no TV cameras following him <clears> around. Before uh, TV. But, news reels. Yeah, but they weren't following him around. They did a good job of hiding that he was crippled because they, they thought well, it they actually, they actually He asked, obstructed crippleness. They, they, actually <laughs> asked, they actually asked the press not to show right. him. There's only supposedly <clears> one <throat> piece of footage anywhere of him walking with his braces. Oh, and uh, otherwise, also, to, to their credit, he was working in a radio age and running for <laughs> office in a radio age, right. not a right. television age. And film was very slow radio, you know. Right. Um, Play the newsreels at the movie theaters, and that's where people would get their news. Week old news. Yeah, well, that was the way it was. Yeah. What happened? What happened to um, Kevin? Kevin, where's Kevin? Did we lose uh, Kevin? Uh, he was muted, and now he probably turned off his camera. Hmm. 
Where did he go? So, Alex. Yeah. Before, <clears throat> before we go, I just wanted to share something with you. I hear you got your MacBook back. Yeah, I mean, your Mac Pro back. Pro. And yes. It's all good, right? So, this week, I'm in Orlando. I've been here all week. Yeah. I'm going home tomorrow. And uh, on Are you with the gay lord? Uh, no, okay. I'm at uh, the well, Let him finish Walt what he's Disney saying. Swan. Uh. Oh, nice. Uh, let him finish, finish what he's and, saying. Um, and so... I, I Tuesday morning I get up I put my Apple Watch on, yeah, and I touch it and it clicks. I'm like, what the hell's that? Look at this. What? Uh, we, I, I don't see. What's wrong? Oh, it's coming apart. Oh, oh, you know what that is? The face. That's a swollen, yeah, a swollen battery. Swollen battery. I had one of those. Did you? Oh, yeah. Sure. Did not not on it? this not on this watch, but on the is your yours one of the new ones? No, this is old. Oh, because that one. Did they fix it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, did they fix it free? Yep, because a swollen battery is a, uh, uh, yeah. Dangerous. Didn't cost me a penny. You know, they, it's the yeah. you know they're not going to fix mine for free? They're not? Why? Nope. Why? They want to charge me 79 bucks for the battery. That's the best. It's really? right. Well, all I know is I got my, my, my Mac Pro back. And this time, they replaced once again the CPU, okay? And they replaced the logic board. So that basically, except for the flash Ooh. memory and the power supply, Ooh. everything Ooh. in this computer is replaced. It may be refurbed uh, parts, but it's been replaced. So that's, that's pretty good. $5,000 worth of work. Mm. For three hundred wow. bucks. For three hundred and fifty nine dollars, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't beat yeah. that. Yeah. So you know what the hell. You know, but what that. do you think about Apple now? Uh, I love I'm them. Apple. I love them. I think they're terrific. I think that they're the best company that ever lived in the whole wide world. You know? Now you go in, Rob, and you tell them that that's not safe, and uh, you know that well, uh, that I they're putting you in jeopardy. I already spoke with them on the phone. They're sending me a box, and I'm going to ship it uh, to them, and they're going to charge me 79 bucks. Whatever else is wrong, there will be no other charge. Okay. Mm. Well, you know. Maybe you'll get a Mac Pro back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe they'll send you a Mac Pro. I'm, I, yeah, there I, you go. I, you know. I'll trade. Well, this thing's yeah. working okay. You know. Yeah. It's working. Uh, it, it, it's, I don't think it... Knock on wood has the problems that it had. Hey, listen. Th there's the theme song, folks. Gosh. Uh, where? What happened to Jeff? Jeff's just a um, just a door. A window. A, yeah. a door He's been window. called away. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, thanks to Jeff and thanks to Charlie and thanks to Josh and thanks to Phil and thanks to Tony and thanks to Patrick and thanks to Kevin. Thank you, Rob. That's oh, and all. thanks to Donald Trump. Yeah, that's our... Oh, fuck you. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's our citizens panel, and I will wave goodbye to them if they'll wave back. There we go, and you out there can wave at them and wave back. Okay, there we go. Anyway, that's it for our citizen panel for tonight. Let me get rid of them here uh, and uh, make sure that we don't have to uh, deal with them any longer. Uh, I have to turn it all off because the next show up here is uh, Jack Bishop and the intersection. And then we'll be back again tomorrow night right after Damian Chaplin and the exchange at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>